Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun security and cryptocurrency tutorial for you today. In this video, we're going to be talking about data breaches, and in particular, how data breaches can affect users of digital currencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and others. In general, when we talk about a data breach, we mean that a centralized service um, suffered an intrusion and attackers were able to access data that they were not authorized to see. So often uh, the case is that uh, user lists, emails, sometimes passwords, or in some cases even uh, more sensitive data are gathered by the attackers and taken out of that system. We're going to be talking about two examples of crypto-related data breaches, how they affect crypto users, and some ways that you can think about your security posture in these events. The first example we're going to talk about is a password manager data breach, in particular, uh, the last pass breach that occurred. If you're not familiar with password managers, they are tools specifically designed for storing secrets, such as passphrases, two-factor backup codes, uh, or even cryptocurrency seed phrases, GPG keys, SSH keys, all sorts of things. A lot of password managers offer a cloud backup feature, which can be very helpful uh, in the event that you lose your device. So services like LastPass, 1Password, Bitwarden, and others will store an encrypted copy of your vault on their servers. This vault is encrypted using a hopefully long, strong master passphrase that is only known to you. The vault is encrypted on your device, and so the service uh, that is storing the password manager vault does not have any knowledge of the actual passwords or secrets inside. In this particular case, attackers were able to gain copies of these encrypted vaults for users. So you might be asking, since this data is encrypted, how has this affected crypto users? Well, again, it is very critical when using a password manager that you choose a long, strong, an extremely difficult to crack master passphrase. In many cases, users had weaker passphrases than they should have. And with today's hardware and password cracking tools, attackers were able to find uh, the keys to those vaults and decrypt them. When you decrypt uh, the encrypted password manager vault, you're able to read all the passwords and seed phrases inside that vault. So what has happened is several users of LastPass have noticed the theft of cryptocurrencies uh, several months or years after this breach occurred. This is likely because they were using a weaker uh, than necessary master passphrase. So once attackers found the correct key to decrypt their vaults, they were able to read those seed phrases, import them into their own wallets, and steal all the funds inside. This is a really unfortunate loss for those users because those crypto transactions are irreversible. This is also a difficult situation because once attackers have access to that encrypted vault, uh, they have an unlimited amount of time to try cracking them open. That's why it's so critical to pick a master passphrase that cannot be cracked even by the best hardware in any reasonable amount of time. Uh, it is certainly possible to choose a passphrase that cannot be cracked within a human lifetime, uh, even on the world's best hardware, but many users don't generate passphrases that are strong enough. It's also important here to talk about the storage of seed phrases in an encrypted vault what that means for your overall security posture. In general, it's my opinion and the opinion of some of my peers that it is acceptable to store the seed phrase for a hot wallet, such as a mobile or desktop wallet, in an encrypted form in a password manager. The reason for this is, if you're using a hot wallet, 
that is a wallet that is uh, generated on a phone or a PC, that application is already storing an encrypted copy of your crypto keys on a general purpose network device. For example, if you're using something like Coinomi or you're using Exodus, uh, that wallet is storing an encrypted copy of the keys protected by a PIN or a passphrase. So if you store another encrypted copy of that seed in something like a password manager that's designed for storing secrets, and you do protect it with a strong passphrase, your level of security is about the same. You're not really reducing your security in any way other than the fact that you are storing a copy of the encrypted keys in another service. That said, you should never store a passphrase in or a seed phrase rather in plain text ever under any circumstances on a PC or a phone. If you store a seed phrase in a Google Doc, a Word Doc, a text file, or even in a picture, uh, there are instances of malware out there scanning user devices and stealing those. If you're talking about the seed phrase for a cold or hardware offline wallet, you should never store that on any general purpose device ever, even if it's encrypted. The reason for that is the whole purpose of a hardware offline wallet is to generate and store those keys away from network devices where the attack surface is higher. There's simply more chances for somebody to compromise a PC or a phone, which runs lots of different software, than there is for a special purpose device that only runs code for generating and storing crypto keys. So let's move on to another type of crypto data breach. And this is one that is probably a little bit better for the end users in the last pass breach where seed phrases were stolen, but still a risk nonetheless. In this example, we're talking about the coin market cap data breach. In this case, user email lists were stolen. So you could sign up for a coin market cap account to keep track of your favorite cryptocurrency prices, get, you know, sorts of information that you would get from a website like that. And in this case, just the emails were leaked as far as we know. The risk here is making yourself a bigger target for phishing attacks. Phishing is when somebody tries to trick you into giving up private information under the guise of being some legitimate source like wallet support or exchange support. And in this case, the risk here is that your email is now associated with a cryptocurrency service. So attackers think if you have a coin market cap account, it's very likely that you may be the users of some service like MetaMask or Trust Wallet or Coinbase or any number of cryptocurrency wallets and uh, exchange services. So what they do then is they send out mass amounts of spam to the email addresses that are on this list. I get quite a few of them uh, because I myself was affected by this data breach uh, as I was also affected by the LastPass data breach. So it's very interesting for me to gather some sort of data on how these attacks work and share it with you. So in this case, it's very important to be vigilant of phishing scams. If you're using crypto, you're already a big target for phishing because attackers love irreversible crypto transactions. You should be aware of the common types of phishing that occur that try to get seed phrases, exchange credentials, and even more sophisticated types of attacks. So be aware that if you use crypto services already, you're going to be a target for phishing. And if your email is leaked in a data breach like this, you will become an extra target for phishing um, because attackers know you have a higher likelihood of using these services than say somebody whose email was leaked in another data breach for a, you know an email service or a shopping service or something like that. So just educate yourself on what phishing looks like. Take your time if you get an email that seems threatening or urgent and just be aware. So I hope you found this video interesting. 
Uh, as usual, there is an article uh, that accompanies this video on the Chain Tutorials website if you like to read. So again, I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thank you for learning something new with me today. Stay safe.